Up until recently, I hadn't been to a job interview for many years, but not so long ago, I woke up one morning feeling in the mood to take a look at the job sites. You see, over the last couple of months, I haven't been getting many hours at work, unsurprisingly. I work at a university as a tutor, and I can only assume that student numbers are down, especially international students. So anyway, I saw a job online, IT Professional. Quite a generic title, but it only required one or two years experience, so it wasn't quite an entry-level position, but it was getting close. Its salary was only defined as industry standard, so I assume that's code for not very good. From the description, I understood the job to be a back office job, that is, the position isn't client facing. My role would be to support other staff from the basement or whatever. Anyway, I applied, and after a few days or so, I was sent a congratulatory email saying that I had been shortlisted and was invited to participate participate in an intensive interview process. They asked me to arrive at their building in the city at 12pm and allow for up to four hours for the process to conclude. They also noted that I should arrive at least 10 minutes early with photographic ID and to wait inside the building's foyer. The day had arrived, and I arrived in the foyer as requested at approximately 11.45am, 15 minutes early. But to my surprise, there were already about 50 other people waiting around in the foyer as well. Surely they weren't all here for the same position. So I randomly went around asking people if they were here for the interview for the IT professional job. Everyone I spoke to said they were. I couldn't believe it, 50 or so people all applying for the same low-paying job. When I looked around, I saw mostly men, unsurprisingly, but there were about five women. Most of the men were wearing dark grey or navy suits. One guy I think was wearing a bright blue suit with a bow tie. To be fair, I wasn't even wearing a suit. I purposely came dressed in jeans and a polo shirt. I mean, they were nice jeans and a polo shirt, but they weren't exactly very formal. I wore them because the job description stated that it wasn't a client-facing job, and as I've worked in IT before, a polo shirt was a fairly acceptable form of workwear. But believe it or not, there was somebody who was dressed even less formally than I was. There was a guy who was sitting on one of the sofas. Mind you, only about 10 people were lucky enough to have gotten themselves a seat. Everybody else was standing. Anyway, the guy sitting on the sofa looked exactly like British comedian Ricky Gervais. Ricky was actually wearing a pair of fairly dirty blue overalls. It looked like he had just come from a construction site. Anyway, his attire piqued my interest, so I went up and spoke with him. He even had a British accent, so I started to think that maybe he was actually Ricky Gervais. But then I thought, what's the chances of Ricky Gervais being in Australia applying for an IT job? But the guy's accent was a bit more posh than Ricky's. Perhaps he was from Oxford or Cambridge or somewhere like that. Anyway, I introduced myself, and he introduced himself as Sam. But still, I couldn't help but think he was actually Ricky Gervais playing some sort of prank. Maybe he was host of some new hidden camera show. We got talking, and he told me he was applying for the IT job as well. It was a bit surprising, seeing that he was pretty much dressed as a janitor. But that's the sort of thing Ricky Gervais would do, so it didn't seem to faze me at the time. As we were talking, we were both looking out at all the other potential candidates, and noticed that they were all pretty much wearing the same sort of thing – navy blue or dark grey suits. I quipped that perhaps we're at a Where's Wally convention. Ricky, slash Sam, let's just call him Ricky, laughed and kind of looked at what I was wearing, and then looked at what he was wearing, and said, well, I guess we're the Wallies. I laughed and kind of gestured towards what he was wearing, a pair of blue work overalls. Did you just come from work, did you? Yeah, yeah, I do carpet cleaning. Okay, are you looking to change professions? Yeah, I've been looking to change professions for the last 20 years or so. Anyway, Ricky went on to tell me that he had applied to a countless number of jobs over the last couple of years, and wasn't too phased about it anymore. He certainly didn't care about what he wore to interviews, that's for sure. Finally, at about 12.25, three people with name badges around their necks came walking down the stairs dressed in, would you believe it, jeans and polo shirts. I was a bit pissed off, knowing that we'd been told to arrive at least 10 minutes early, but these guys waltzed in 25 minutes late. But I kept my cool, at least for the time being. 
One of them got our attention and spoke up. G'day everybody, my name's Bill. I work for So and So Associates. These are my colleagues, Brad and Haley. Uh, we'll be running you through the interview process today for the role of IT professional for So and So Company. Anyway, for the next half an hour or so, we'll just be staying in the foyer and we'll be calling you up one by one just to have a quick chat. Remember, this process can take up to four hours or so, so make sure that you haven't got anything else on this afternoon. Anyway, uh, let's get started. So as promised, they started calling out people's names and having a quick one or two minute chat with each person. After each chat, I noticed that some people were being sent up the stairs, while others were being sent back to wait with the rest of us. This went on for about 20 or 30 people or so, with about 15 people being sent up the stairs. For your information, all five of the ladies were sent up the stairs. Anyway, there were still at least 20 of us who hadn't been called up, Ricky and myself included. Bill stood up and got the group's attention again. Hi everybody, it turns out that we've got everybody we need today to continue with the process, so all the rest of you have been given an early mark. Thanks for coming along today and I wish you all the best of luck in your future job search. Cheers! Anyway, most people just seem to accept their fate and head out the front door. I looked at Ricky and he kind of just shrugged his shoulders and joked with me, well, I guess I'll see you at the next job interview. Yeah, it looks that way. But actually, despite everybody else just walking out peacefully, I was kind of pissed off. We were told in the email that we had been shortlisted and that we were invited to participate in an interview process that was potentially going to last four hours. But here we were, having not even spoken to anybody, being sent home. At that point, I decided to act. Excuse me, Bill, could I just have a quick word? Sure, what's up? Well, I was under the impression that we had all been shortlisted and were all going to have the opportunity to have an interview, but I wasn't even called up. Oh yeah, sorry about that. We had way too many applicants, many of which were just handed to us at the last moment. Sorry, as you've probably gathered, we don't actually work for the IT company, we're just the recruiters. Okay, I understand that, but uh, we were told to arrive 10 minutes early and you guys didn't actually show up till about 12.25. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, we were so busy dealing with all the applications. That's our fault. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah, it's just that many of us have taken the entire day off to attend to this interview. Some of us are probably not even from here. It's just a bit of a kick in the teeth that many of us didn't even get to talk to a single person. Oh look, I totally get it. Yeah, this process can be a bit cruel sometimes, but I'm afraid that's just the process we have. Anyway, thanks for raising your concerns. I'll note it down and mention it to my boss. I'm sorry, we've got to get going now to continue the uh, interview process. I'm sure you understand. Anyway, good luck uh, with your job hunt. Uh, see you later. At that point, Bill and his comrades turned their backs and started heading back up the stairs. To be fair, Bill was a fairly nice guy, extremely social, very good at talking, but unfortunately I still wasn't satisfied. As they walked up the stairs, I decided to yell out, but your process is broken. Sorry? Your process is broken. You said this is part of your process, but your process is broken. This time, the other guy, the tougher looking guy, Brad, started approaching me. Sorry mate, what's wrong? I'm just saying your process is broken. You sent out an email telling us that we had been shortlisted and that we were invited to participate in a four hour long interview. One, I didn't send out any email, that had nothing to do with me. Secondly, you weren't invited to an interview, you were invited to an interview process. Do you really think that's what people would think? Do you really think that people would differentiate between an interview and an interview process? Look, mate, it doesn't matter what I think. Our job is to select the best applicant, and that's exactly what we're doing. Okay, I get that, but do you think it's fair to tell people to allow up to four hours for an interview process, basically a lot of these guys booked out their entire day for this, and then tell us to arrive 10 minutes early, but then you guys rock up 25 minutes late? I mean, what if the roles were reversed? What if we rocked up 25 minutes late? But then on top of all that, half of us weren't even called up to have a chat with you. I mean, wouldn't it have been better just to not call us in today, instead of calling us in and then not talking to us? None of this seems very fair to me. Look, what can I tell you? Sometimes life isn't very fair, mate. What's your name anyway? Sorry? What's your name? At this point, Brad seemed to be getting a little bit aggressive towards me. So I asked him, what does it matter what my name is? Well, how can I help you out if you don't tell me your name? You already have my name. It's on that list, right? 
Brad started fumbling through his papers, but then realised the futility of his actions and turned to me and said, Mate, just to make this easy, give me your ID. Sorry? Just give me your ID. Um, why? In the email, you were told to bring in your ID, right? Well, just give it to me and it'll make this process a hell of a lot easier. Um, that's not going to happen. Come on, mate, what's the big deal? Just give me your ID, or at least give me your name. At this point, Brad was starting to get visibly upset. I had no idea why he was so desperate to find out my name, but I assume his intentions weren't very good. I started to think that he was probably going to blacklist me or something similar, so I asked him, Are you a police officer? What? Are you a police officer? No. What's that got to do with anything? Well, if you were a police officer, I would give you my name, but you're not, so I'm not going to give it to you. Mate, you've lost the plot. At that point, Brad walked off and headed back up the stairs to catch up with his colleagues. The whole time, during our little heated conversation, I saw all of Brad's details on his name badge that he had around his neck. So just as one final parting shot, I called out his full name and position across the foyer. Thanks Brad Smith, lead consultant. I could see the fury in his eyes. He turned as if he was going to chase after me, but his colleagues held him back. I find it funny that he had tried so hard to get my name, but in the end, I got his name and position. By the way, if you haven't already realised by now, none of the names that I used in this video were the people's real names. But yeah, that's my little story. That was the last and most ridiculous interview that I've ever experienced. Cheers!